What up guys, today we're talking about the iPhone 16 Plus. Is it worth it? Should you upgrade if you have an older device like the 15 Plus? One week later with the iPhone 16 Plus. But first, if you're new to the channel guys, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to just stay up to date with all the latest videos immediately as soon as they drop. It would be a huge help to the channel. Follow me on all social media platforms. All of the links are below. Now, unless you've been living under a rock over the past week since launch, and even longer than that since it was announced, you know that this is just an incremental upgrade. Now, saying all of that doesn't mean it's a bad phone. You know how it is. It's, it's a great phone. Let's just talk about that. But I can also tell you right off the bat that if you have the iPhone 15 Plus from last year or even the 14 Plus, there's no need to upgrade to this device. Now, I'm gonna go a lot deeper into why that is in a follow-up video coming in a few days when I compare this directly to the 15 Plus, like you see here, and the 14 Plus for another video. But let's jump in, talk about what I really enjoy about this device. And right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the beautiful colors on this device. In my opinion, they're absolutely stunning, especially in person, just a ton of saturation compared to what we had last year with the pastel colors, we still get that matte finish on here. The ultramarine color, it's just a very nice looking device. I hate putting a case on it, but it is what it is. We have to protect it. So we get the ultramarine with the matte finish, and there's a teal color, a pink color, a white and a black color, and they all have this beautiful matte finish. Now, of course, I enjoy the size of this device, same display, 6.7 inches, just like we had last year. Doesn't feel any different in the hand when you are holding it. So if you have the 15 Plus or the 14 Plus, it's going to feel very similar. Same build quality, right? Aluminum and glass, a very light device. Some of you might love that. Some of you might hate it. I actually don't mind. I think it's a very comfortable phone, especially with those rounded edges like we had last year. Now, real quick, I wanna mention one thing before we get into the rest of this video. Apple Intelligence, I am so sick and tired of seeing all the ads and the commercials and hearing about Apple Intelligence, this and that. It's not even available. And I gotta be honest, for a company to push that as the major reason to get the new phone, the fact that it isn't available yet is just a slap in the face, once again, from Apple. People should be pissed off about it. But again, a very incremental upgrade from last year's device, that's why they are pushing it. So saying all that, Let's talk about what is new with this device, the action button, the camera button, and of course, the new chip. Are these reasons to upgrade? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the action button right now. So of course, you can go in and program it. The 15 Plus and previous iPhones have had the mute switch. You know, which one do you prefer? But across the board, every new iPhone this year has this action button, and you can go in and you can remap it to do different things. So if you click on here, right now I think I have it set on the, yeah, so my flashlight comes on when I hit the action button right now, but of course we can change that if we want. So flashlight, silent, just like we've had over, well, just over the past two years really with the action button, lots of things. And you could add shortcuts to this if you want. Most of the time I leave it on silent, but I have been using my flashlight lately, so that's why I just leave it on there for now. You can also set it to open up your camera, but why would you do that with the new camera button? That is the next thing. And I gotta be honest with you, this thing annoys me more than anything on a device in a very long time. It does take a minute to get used to. You are going to take a lot of accidental pictures, just getting used to it. And you can go into settings and, and change up one thing where you can single click or double click. I have it on double click because I tend to hit it by mistake and open up the camera all the time. So right now, if I just do one click, it does nothing and double click, it does bring up the camera and then you can go in and change the aperture and do some other things. But I gotta be honest, how many people are actually going to use that? I don't really know anybody that wants to use that. You guys leave some comments and let me know. Look. You can open up the camera button here. This is a little gimmicky in my opinion. Is it cool? Eh, is it? I don't really know. I don't really care about this button at all. I can do without it. We already have multiple ways to open up the camera. We didn't need another one. I feel like they threw this in there to kind of entice you to, oh, the iPhone has a new feature. I feel like this is not necessary. 
Maybe my opinion will change after I use this a bit longer, but right now, lots of accidental pictures. There is a learning curve to get used to it, but even somebody like me who is a tech enthusiast, I'm not going to use it. I'm just not. I want to pull out like everybody else, like most people out there, unless you are a professional photographer and you want to go in like that, most people just want to pull out their camera, point and shoot, and just go from there. And there are multiple ways to do that already on this phone. You can even set it up to open up with double tapping on the back or tapping on the back logo. There are tons of ways already to open up the camera app on this device. You can do it from the lock screen. Why do I need an extra button? Right? If you guys love it, I respect it. I am just not a fan of this button. I feel like it's gimmicky. I feel like it's just an addition to because they had nothing else to do with it. Imagine this device without this button. It is basically the iPhone 15 Plus Plus without that button with the new chip. That's it because Apple intelligence is still not here. We don't know when it's coming. And I bet you, come back to this video, there's probably going to be more delays with it. So the A18, right? There's a different chip in the Plus and the regular model compared to what we have on the Pro and the Pro Max. So the, the Pro versions get the A18 Pro and this gets the A18. Very powerful chip. Gaming is not going to be an issue. Doing whatever you need to do on this thing. Look, look, iPhones have been crazy powerful for a very long time. Across the board, smartphones are just I mean, over, we never use these phones to their full capabilities, and that's no different. Is it powerful? Of course it is. Is last year's 15 Plus powerful? Of course it is. These phones can do a lot. This is no different gaming on here. Of course, you can do it watching content on here on this beautiful 6.7 inch display. Is a joy. Really good speakers on here. Again, it's just a very powerful chip. Now, gaming on here, it does get a bit warm just like pretty much every phone on the market. If you're gonna game on your phone, expect it to get warm, right? We do get some new cooling, but again, it's still gaming on a small device, a very compact device, it is going to get warm. But saying that, not as warm as last year. Now the 15 Plus, I didn't have any issues with gaming. We did try it on the Pro Max last year with the titanium and it did get very hot. Still, it never, never stopped working. I didn't have any issues with it. It just got warmer than the Plus. It does get warm, but again, it doesn't affect the performance in any way. Now let's talk about the camera on the 16 Plus. So we have a dual camera setup just like last year, the same 48 megapixel lens and a 12 megapixel ultra wide and just like last year it takes fantastic photos and great video but this has been the case for iphones for a very long time but again this takes great photos so if you want something to just pull out of your pocket and shoot this is a great phone for that now one addition to the camera is this also offers spatial photos and videos just like the pro models but again that is only going to apply if you have a handful of people that have purchased a four thousand dollar accessory now the plus phone does offer 4x optical zoom and compare that to the 10x on the pro model so if you want to spend less money though the 16 plus easily and i mean easily performs great when taking photos now video quality again fantastic 4k 30, 60 frames per second, just overall a really, really good camera on the 16 Plus, just like the 15 Plus. So keep in mind, I am doing a comparison between these two phones. What am I gonna say? You guys already know. Now, the one thing I really did love last year about the 15 Plus was the amazing battery life. Day and a half, all day, easy, never stressed about it, ever. And that continues on the 16 Plus. I haven't had any issues. Battery life on here has been fantastic. A day and a half, easy. And I've been using this, putting it through its paces. Not a lot of gaming on here because that's not what I do. I don't even enjoy it. I just do it to test it a little bit. But again, great battery life on here. Now, let's talk about some of the issues. So first off, storage and price. $899 for a minimum of 128 gigs, just like last year. Ah, I wish it was 256. It should be. And I think it's a missed opportunity by Apple. You have to compare what else is out there on the market and at what price you can get that for. And I can buy devices much cheaper than this. Yeah, I know Apple sheep. It's not an iPhone, but I can buy many devices out there for a lot less money with standard, more storage, 
right off the bat. But 128, I was hoping for 256. I'm expecting we'll get it next year because 128, I mean, is it enough for most people? Probably, well, you tell me. Is 128 enough for you guys? Leave a comment and let me know. But price point, value, right? Bang for buck. I always talk about value and bang for buck. The price point, the storage. Now, we do get some extra RAM on these devices, which is good, right? It's still not the RAM we get in, in um, like Android devices. But again, the optimization, the efficiency of these devices, you don't need that type of RAM in iPhones. And that's always been the case because of how efficient Apple is that, you know, they make it all in house so they can make it work together really well. But we do get more RAM. I just wish we had more storage, especially for a phone that is pushing the thousand dollar price point. It's just right at this point. Now, the other thing on here, again, 60 hertz refresh rate. Some of you care, some of you don't. I think it's a crime at this price that we're not getting 120 hertz should be standard there are rumors next year we're going to get it across the board we will see if apple delivers on that but overall look the 16 plus is a really really good phone it is a powerful phone takes great photos great video great battery life on here the display is absolutely beautiful great speakers on here the action button you love it you hate it do you prefer the mute switch let me know drop a comment the camera button some of you might really enjoy that i think it's a little gimmicky i don't even think it's necessary to be on the phone i feel like they threw it in there as an addition just to say we got something new on a phone with just an incremental upgrade and of course, Apple Intelligence, I wish everyone would shut up about it because it's not out. They've been pushing it since day one at the keynote. That was the main thing. I see commercials for it every day. It's a little ridiculous that they're pushing it this hard when it's not even available at launch. But the 16 Plus, is it a really good phone? Absolutely. Do I recommend it if you are coming from an older device? I do, but not from the 15 plus and not from the 14 plus. And I have videos on both of those devices comparing it to this device and why I think you should hold on to those phones for now. But anything older than that, I think it would be a really good upgrade. This is a phone you're gonna be able to have for four or five years easily and it will be powerful and really good battery life. And of course, it's gonna do everything you need to do and that includes photos and video but that's it guys a 16 plus one week later let me know what you think i'll be back soon peace